I, I, it was just huge. Uh, more documents were found in some location that the, for, the then former vice president used to call his own. Uh, he used to, as we know, we were focused on a few days ago when it was revealed by CBS that on November 2nd, they found classified documents at the highest level, at least 10 of them, in a locked closet of the University of Pennsylvania, the so-called Biden Center lease building in Washington. And then we find out it didn't end there. Speculation had it. I'm sure there's more than one closet that Joe Biden had in his life that might have some documents. And the, all we know is classified documents found at another location. This, to me, has everybody's attention, not just Fox. What a double standard. He was saying that it's so irresponsible for President Trump to have classified information. Well, now it's revealed a second batch has been found, found in his possession. Uh, the first batch was found on November 2nd. So why are we just learning about it two months later? The second batch that was found and announced yesterday, we don't know the location of it. Mm -mm. It's a separate location from the Penn Biden Center. And uh, there's so many questions here. Why don't we know that second location? That is such a good question. You know, and here's the thing, and this harkens back to Watergate. What did the president know and when did he know it? Was this second location revealed before the midterms too? Because then it would look like a cover-up. Obviously, there are a million questions, but the White House is so lawyered up over this. Everybody in the press briefing room, the Brady briefing room yesterday, had questions about these documents. Of course, Corinne Jean-Pierre was just going to read out of the big book of answers that have been prepared by lawyers in the comms team, so she was not going to deviate. But Ed O'Keefe, who is a great reporter, and he has told me that his, mo uh, his uh, grandma is probably watching Fox and Friends right now. Hello, Grandma O'Keefe. <laughs> uh, he had a great interchange with her. He, just like everybody else, is just trying to get some details to figure out what happened. Here's Ed and Kareen. What I can tell you is that I'm not going to go beyond what the president laid out. Well, we're going to ask them because that's our job. And I understand. So and, and my job is to answer your so questions. So here we go. Let's go. We ask this is because on like day two of this administration, when he swore all of you in, the president said, quote, I'm going to make mistakes. When I make them, I'll acknowledge them and I'll tell you and I'll need your help to help me correct them. So you're the one here yeah, talking to us about this. That's why we're asking you. So let's just remember that. I, uh, when Ed, he was Ed, asked yesterday. Ed, Ed I'm, we, don't need, we don't need to have this. We work very well together. We, do. I don't, we don't need to have this kind of confrontation. You're laying out your part of the job. We're laying out our part of the job. I know, but I'm just saying that we don't need to have contention. You don't need to be contentious with me here, Ed. The president was asked yesterday but did not answer this part of the question. Why didn't he or someone in the White House inform the American people when these documents were discovered on November 2nd? Did it have anything to do with the fact that the election was just a few days away? Again, Ed, this is under review by the Department of Justice. Right. And you're going to tell me it's going to end review. with just the second tranche? We're going to be here, as uh, we speculated earlier in the week, just one box, one locked closet at one office with all the offices and locations that the former vice president and former chairman of foreign relations had all those years. It didn't make sense. The other thing that is odd is why would a bunch of lawyers show up to move boxes? Aren't they a little overqualified to go into a closet and move boxes out of an office, which we don't know right. why he was moving out of the office? I imagine they had other people at the school that would probably sit in that office or or occupy the Biden Center, right, located in Washington. Why are lawyers showing up? Well, so I would love to know the chain of events that led to them cleaning out the so-called locked closet, let alone the second tranche, which we know dangerously little about. We know very few details, and there's got to be something embarrassing about that. But, I, Brian, I think uh, probably when they decided, hey, let's look through the stuff, they said, you know what, let's not send a junior staff member. Let's send one of Joe's lawyers so that there would be legal protections. And, of course, what uh, Joe did say in uh, Mexico City the other day was his lawyers haven't even told him what is uh, you know what these are about or anything but, like but that. Steve, let me just, just think, so that he has walk that back deniability. a second. Think about this: if I have to clean out a closet, right, and I think I have to send lawyers, that means I had an indication that I might have something in there that I shouldn't have. Either that, or you send the the pool boy or the butler to clean out that closet. Unless, of course, you're worried about what might be there. And why would a responsible president, who is so demeaning of right. a former president, be worried about what he had in that closet that he's got to go tell a lawyer who, I don't know, what do they bill, $200 an hour, to go over there and clean it right. out for in, him? In D.C., It's a lot of bubble wrap.
1500 bucks an hour. Well, That's a lot of hours. Republicans want to get to the bottom of it. The Senate Intel Committee wrote to the Director of National Intelligence and said, we want access to these classified documents, a damage assessment by the Intel community, and a briefing on Biden and Trump's classified documents. Republicans like Josh Hawley and Lindsey Graham are calling for the AG to appoint a special counsel to investigate. Listen. Yeah. The answers given by the White House are nonsensical. If there's not a special counsel appointed to find out how this happened uh, with President Biden regarding classified information, it will hurt the country. Garland, if you're listening, if you thought it was necessary, Attorney General, to appoint a special counsel regarding President Trump, then you need to do the exact same thing regarding President Biden when it comes to handling classified information. And, yeah. and the senator is absolutely right. The curious timing of all this, of course, it happened, uh, it was revealed two months after the midterm elections. That is embarrassing. You know, if there's a lot more discovered before. Infuriating is what it, it is. is. Yeah, exactly. And that would be a cover-up. And that is a scandal. And what did the president know? And when did he know it? But the curious part is also, why are these leaks coming out now? Because, you know, the Department of Justice has been working on this for a couple of months, and they have not leaked anything. It appears that somebody from within the Joe Biden circle, and so you got to wonder why they would be doing that now. Do they not want him to run again? No, I, I don't think it's that. I think they want to leak things out, little drips in a drab. We, we can't Far connect. The election. We and can't connect. Trump from indictment? We can't connect. I, I don't think so. We can't connect the dots yet until we know more about the second batch, more about the first batch. Don't be surprised if there's a third the batch difference, because though. they're starting. They've been looking at Joe's houses. They've been looking, I would assume, at the University of Delaware in the library where his Senate papers are and he had access to top secret stuff. Don't be surprised if there's Neither not a third batch. Neither one should take top classified information. But two things come to mind. Trump was president at the time and he had the power to declassify. Biden was vice president, leaving the office as right. vice president, and did not have that power. The next thing is, we saw in, in the last election that they knew about, that the media knew about Hunter Biden's laptop. It was taken off Twitter, it was taken off of Facebook, the New York, Time, the New York Post tried to, to get this story out, no one was reporting on it, everyone was say it was dis, saying it was Russian disinformation. So that was right before the election. This happened to be a few days before the election, and no one said a word about it. No, Here we are two in, months later and we find out. And keep in mind the University of Pennsylvania, how much money the Biden Center took yeah. uh, from these Chinese people that just wanted to see Joe Biden. So uh, did they have access to tank? that yeah, office? Absolutely. And why was it part of these uh, this paperwork Ukraine? Uh, what was he trying to keep from there? Or is it just a coincidence that maybe the most controversial thing about Hunter Biden is his place uh, at Burisma? It makes you wonder. Ukraine. It's all about money. It's all about how much money can a university get? Follow how much money, money can a family get? They care more about that, it seems, than national security and China getting a hold of our Which is why Jim Jordan is launching the web, uh, a committee. He's going to be a head of a committee. Uh, to look into the weaponization of government. He's going to be with us soon. And the president is actually going to make comments today at 10 o'clock Eastern time about the economy. He's going to be in a room full of reporters. I got a feeling somebody's going to ask him. Let's see if he says anything. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.